but I'm telling you about this. Oh yeah, thanks Caroline for recording. We are supposed to be doing that uh, from the beginning. But I am telling you this because it spoke to me about, it speaks to me about how lonesome people are and how much people are longing for connection and uh, to be seen and to, to, well, just to have some connection. And that, that, that gives me hope. I feel like everybody is wanting love and connection and peace of mind. And what's going on in the world is not headed in that direction and is not taking us in that direction. But I do have, um, you know, I was at a meeting with some very senior Dharma teachers this week and all of us asking, you know, how are we teaching in the face of all of this? And, and, and I've, and asking sort of what is our practice in the midst of it. And mine really is to trust that, because I've seen it, you know, that the work I've done on myself has benefited other people and maybe even some of you. And that the work you're doing on yourself definitely benefits me and no doubt um, the lives of everyone around you. So we need to keep going. And the work is hard because it's asking us to be super present pretty much all the time, which none of us can manage to do 24 seven. But it's also kind of easy too. Each, each moment it's easy to just kind of step back, to kind of, you know, take, I've talked about this a lot over the years, this backward step into receptivity, into trusting our hearts, and into listening to the teachings that really at times I have to say during the past couple months have felt like my only safe and reliable refuge. So the ones that I wanted, you know, we could look at this from so many different angles, the Four Noble Truths or the Four Foundations of Mindfulness. And, but the ones that I want to share with you this morning were, are the Three Marks of Existence or sometimes called um, the Three Characteristics of Life. And they, and I think it's one of the most universal ways to illuminate the wisdom of the heart. I mean, all of the ways that I've mentioned, all of the Buddhist lists, all the practices, and not just of Buddhist practice, but um, all the practices that bring us into an experience of self-love and understanding will lead us to love and understand others. And um, But these basic principles, these three basic principles, um, uh, I will just go over with you because you know them already and we have touched on them in the past. But the first one is called Anicca and it is the truth of everything changing. Okay, we all know that. What's new about that? I want to hear something new, right? Um, but understanding deeply, not just knowing the map in your head. Yeah, I know what the three characteristics are understanding deeply in your own experience that is what is transformative because when we really understand the truth of impermanence and the truth that everything changes we don't get so caught up in the ups and downs of life the joys and sorrows the gain and loss the pleasure the pain um you know i lost an assistant who uh, was wonderful for two years but at the end i do believe stole and that's very very painful um, when somebody quits suddenly and you get very disappointed by what you discover and I it, it, so easy for me to get caught on focusing on that how could you what what was going on try to under no just understand this is part of the worldly winds and sometimes they blow you know joy and sometimes they blow loss and grief and disappointment um, and we know when things are good we don't want them to change I have said this before I look in the mirror and I say okay good I'm good right now I don't need to age anymore this is good uh, right you know that feeling and when things are hard we can't wait for them to change and you know uh, my cousin is learning astrology so she can figure out how they change you know we so all these different ways of struggling and trying to, you know, predict and control. And, and Suzuki Roshi said, I love this quote. He said, you know, the best way to control, he was he said anyone, but of course we're talking about ourselves, uh, is 
he said the best way to control a cow is to give it a really large meadow, a really big pasture. You know, just let it wander and graze where it needs to, and it will be very peaceful. So what is that big pasture? You know, it's the spaciousness of mind and heart that lets things come and go as they inevitably will. Why? Because they inevitably will. So what is the relationship we're going to make with that? Clinging, doing everything we can to control and keep things the way we want. Or taking a deep breath and relaxing into some graciousness and trust that, um, that it's possible to relate to things in a different way. Um, it's possible to relate to things in a different way. You know, the earth wants to renew itself. Spring comes inevitably every spring. You know, Jack told me a story that he read somewhere about these kindergarten kids who they were talking about death and trying to understand about death. And they said, if there wasn't death, there wouldn't be room for us, for new kids. So that's another understanding. And it's like that quote that I read to you at the end of the meditation, again, from Suzuki Roshi. I was going back to his book, Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind, which I think it came out in 1971. But it is still one of the most reliably deep um, books about meditation that I love so much. Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind. You can put that in the chat, Caroline. Um, we must have beginner's mind, he says, free from possessing anything, a mind that knows everything is inflowing change. Nothing exists but momentarily in its present form and color. One thing flows into another and cannot be grasped. Before the rain stops, we hear a bird. Even under the heavy snow, we see snowdrops and some new growth crocuses. In the east, I saw rhubarb already. In Japan, in the spring, we eat cucumbers. When we realize the everlasting truth of everything changes, and when we can find our balance, our composure in it, he says, this is nirvana, finding peace within it. I look around even this room and I see so many possessions that I cling to and that if I had to give them away, I would have this tug like, uh, 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 right? <laughs> um, I have to say, really, really momentarily only in its present form? Well, sure, with a big, vast view, it's true. It's true. And we can relax about that. You know, another thing he said is, when my teacher and I were walking in the rain, he would say, don't walk so fast. The rain is everywhere. Right? I love that. The rain is everywhere when it's raining. We don't have to rush to get to the next raindrops. So can we practice our simple practice of breath by breath, moment by moment, sound by sound, or if you're doing a loving kindness or a self-compassion practice, just phrase by phrase, coming back to the phrases that comfort you, that bring you into an experience of knowing your own worth and your own right to exist in peace and happiness in this life. Um, and can we do this? Even though it's hard, the hardest thing is to remember to do it and then to set aside the time. Um, and to trust that it matters. He also said um, about faith, he said, faith is a state of openness and trust. In other words, a person who is fanatic in matters of religion and clings to certain ideas about the nature of God and the universe, 
becomes a person who has no faith at all. Isn't that interesting? I really never thought of it that way. Instead, they're holding tight. But the attitude of faith is to let go, to become open to the truth, whatever it may be. So that's Anicca, the first of these three characteristics. And then there's Dukkha, the suffering, the fact that life, the first noble truth of the Buddha's teaching, that life has suffering and it's not it's not personal. It's not our fault in that way. You know, it's not because I'm this age or I live in this place or I'm married to this person or I do this job or you do. It's not, um, it's just, this is how life is. There's rarely a time in life when you feel like you've got every duck all in the row, the right relationship and the right place to live and the right work and the right amount of money and the right, I mean, come on, it just isn't like that usually, is it? It hasn't been in my life anyway. And when we understand about, um, you know, that things are always changing, we understand, yeah, this is hard, hard, hard to bear. Uh, you know, what is it my friend David Radin, who teaches Zen at the Ithaca Zen Center, he's always says like, life, it's like, um, it's like getting onto a plane and the flight attendant is making the announcements, you know, and we'll be serving, you know, what you have to do for your safety and please look at the safety card in the seat pocket in front of you and watch us while we put on our mask and do all these things and then we'll serve drinks at some point. Um, <coughs> and then we're going to crash that's it you know and so it, just turning toward these facts of life with loving awareness and it just gives rise to so much compassion doesn't it it's so poignant and it can open our hearts to the tenderness of we're in this together this big thing called life obviously we're not all in um, being targeted together. We're not all in being underrepresented underrepresented together or invisibilized or um, hated or, you know, we're not all in that together. That really is a factor of different identities and of the cultures and, but in the big, big sense of birth and life and death, yes, we are all in this together. And and when you're sitting in the midst of your own fears or your own problems, when you're meditating, you have, you have to. You might try asking yourself, what is more real in this moment? This problem I'm thinking about or my own being? What is more true? What is more real in this moment? You know? And then the third characteristic or mark of existence is called anatta, which is the most confusing one because it translates as selflessness and, or sometimes it's translated as shunyata or emptiness um, or no self, which is the most confusing translation of all, I think. Um, and this is that truth that it's not our fault. It's not personal. Things arise, things pass away. They arise according to causes and conditions. Um, and that our notion of being um, this isolated, separate, and encapsulated self is incorrect. It's not, we are a strand, a beautiful gleaming strand, you know, like a spider web when the sun just comes out and it's got little beads of dew on it. That's us in the web of existence. And uh, as our ancestors on this land knew so well, and I am only claiming them as human ancestors of us all. And Thich Nhat Hanh teaches this very beautifully when he says, I've never died and I was never born. And then he explains how a cloud turns into rain and snow and then it goes down and then it comes into the rivers and the oceans and then it becomes a cloud again and how this is true for all life. And when we can look at this ever, look at our life as an ever unfolding process, 
when we can do that, it gives rise to peace, to equanimity, to a peaceful heart. Um, we can see with the eyes of wisdom then. And when we see with the eyes of wisdom in a more spacious perspective, for me, it makes room for hope based on what I know that everybody does want to be happy. And that war does not make most people happy. And that hate does not make anyone happy. Um, hating completely contradicts the truth that everything depends, every existence depends on something else. You know, none of us have a separate individual existence that's disconnected and independent um, in that way. We share an existence. And this teaching of anatta, of interdependence, really asks us to step back and see that, yes, we are part of life unfolding in a greater dance, a more mysterious dance than we can explain. And whatever is happening, as hard as it is sometimes, to be able to see whatever it is as an invitation as an invitation to the wisdom um, that is there in your heart. It's there in our hearts. And so I'll end this talk with the last uh, Suzuki Roshi quote. <laughs> he says, the goal of our life's effort is to reach the other shore, nirvana. The true wisdom of life, prajna paramita, the true wisdom of life is that in each step of the way, the other shore is actually reached. He's saying in each step of the way, when we're present, when we're allowing life to unfold and finding our peace in it, that is the other shore. So this is what I wanted to share with you this morning. And uh, now is the time I invite you to, uh, any, any reflections or responses or, or just things you're noticing in your practice or wondering about um, in your meditation practice or your mindful life, uh, yeah. Feel free to share, and Caroline will unmute you when you raise your hand, which you can do in the uh, reaction button at the bottom of your screen. Um, and if you turn on your camera and wave wildly, she'll be able to see you because we're a small group this morning. Robert, I see you have your hand up. Here, here you go. Am I audible? Yes. Okay, I was um, just thinking about the lessons of, of photographs and I uncovered a whole box of photographs of me as a baby and my parents and uh, also, um, my college graduation, you know, and you see, you know, you're hit in the face with uh, everything changes. And it's also unexpected the way it's going to go, um, as you pointed out earlier. And uh, that's about it. I, um, well, I guess I can bring this in because. I recently discovered uh, the movie, Do the book Dune in the movie Dune, and and I was reading about the author. I'd never read it before, and he kept he wrote characters that would 
appear to be doing the right thing and then they in, in the later development they turn out to be evil which is also a a symphony on nothing nothing stays the same but people can have good intentions and then it disintegrates so i guess that's part of the theme of everything changes yeah thank you it's really powerful to look back at pictures of when you're young or a baby or it, it, it's um, sometimes I, I look back and I think, I mean, it's, it's, it's a miracle. It's some kind of mystery how that little baby turns into like this old person that I am, or do you know what I mean? It's really, really amazing when you, especially if you haven't seen those photos for a long time. So thank you for sharing that, Bob. Okay. And I remember loving that book, Dune, when I was really young. And I was telling my sister, remember, remember how great that book was? And she said, I never read it. And then she read it recently and she said, it's not that great. I don't think you would love it if you read it again. So anyway, I just, whatever that's worth, I'm not going to read it again. It's very thick, but uh, I know you love science fiction. Ellen, you have your hand up. Can you unmute Ellen? Yes. Yeah, I I, okay. I think this was the most beautiful, uplifting talk. And I, I thank you so much because it's so synchronistic. You described everything I've been feeling. And I read Maria's Sunday paper today too. And I thought Trudy reads that. So it was yeah. very nice, but it's very synchronistic, but because the last gentleman just talked about seeing old pictures and I needed to store a friend's uh, paintings in the garage and I got big boxes of old pictures and I, I, I had the experience he just so well described. And it's, it just seemed like shocking, um, the change. You know, like you don't experience it while you're living it. And then two friends from out of town came and had lunch outside yesterday. And these were two people I grew up with my whole life. And the and the my girlfriend brought her brother. And then she read me a, a letter she had found that her mother had typed that was about my first wedding and the parties and what happened and who was there. And she <laughs> gave it to me. And I, it just, it was like everybody became alive again who are now gone. It, it was incredible. So I can't thank you enough for today. I feel, I just feel restored. Wow. It's magic what you do. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you. Sometimes I look around and I think it's absolutely odd that every single person I'm looking at won't be here someday. Or I think when I'm reading about people in the old days, you know, maybe, um, I don't know, just some historical thing. And I just feel like, I mean, you know, they, they ate their meals and <laughs> you know, they went, you know, put on their dresses and <laughs> makeup and they did all the things I do too in their way according to their time they lived in and it's all gone it's amazing yeah thank you and also it's fine to put um, a question or observation or anything in the chat if you don't feel like um, or like Ellen you can speak you don't have to turn on your camera if you don't want to it's fine with me Sometimes I feel I can see more in your face where you are, where you're coming from, but I can usually hear in your voice too. So that's fine too.
And you know, if you like strongly disagree with something I've said, or you want to bring something else forward, I'm very, very open to and uh, appreciative of that. One thing I would like to bring forward, you know, I think this May, this month of May is like mental health month. And I did speak a month ago about mental illness and mental health and the role of acceptance in healing. Um, but it's also uh, the month of Asian American and Pacific Islander AAPI folks really increasing the visibility and the acknowledgement of the contributions of the people who have been overlooked and and especially since um, our former president started talking about uh, COVID as being, I forget what he said, the China flu or the Kung Fu virus, or he said these horrible things like that. And the, the number of hate crimes against Asian Americans just skyrocketed after that, you know, making everybody be scared of people who look a certain way because they might make you ill. I mean, it was just awful. And so this is a month where there's just a lot of initiatives in different states to bring forward the accomplishments of um, our Asian American ancestors in this country. And because we know that education increases tolerance, education, knowing each other, knowing each other's histories, knowing about each other is the enemy of racism and hate. And I will ask Caroline to put the link in the chat for our um, anti-racism group that James Rosser and Jocelyn Hitter hold the space for that on Fridays. Gabby. Hi, good morning, Trudy. Um, afternoon now. <laughs> uh, I guess for me, it's what I share. I haven't shared for a while. I've been kind of staying quiet for a while. <laughs> I think for a good reason to just recover from a uh, massive workload that feel like waves, you know, and it's like some of my, medita my meditation has been in bed, like um, especially at 9 a.m., just trying to recover from that. And then um, finally I'm like, okay, I feel like I can start um, talking to other people, like checking with my family, see how they're doing. <laughs> but, um, um, and, and just checking with uh, this morning with my aunt, I haven't in a while, she's in another country and um, she's going through her own um, changes, but it's, in life, and I noticed just in her voice, she's very accepting that uh, she's recovering from her hip surgery and she's doing well, but she's alone. Uh, some of my cousins are there. And, um, you know, it just breaks my heart that her and her sister, my mom, they're the only ones left, just never got along since they were kids uh, to this day, <laughs> which means that it puts a little pressure on the next generation. Uh, the cousin so me and my cousins were like what, what should we do what should we do <laughs> you know because she needs little things like like a ramp right now to get out of the house and and um and so yeah we're all trying to resolve the situation and, and be supportive because yeah you know they're not talking they're not getting along then then some how can we support right and so um it's hard, you know, it's heartbreaking to watch it, um, but hopefully do just something about it, even little things like that. And, and I got a, a plan so I can call her on my phone um, and um, just check in with her like weekly. So that'd be my thing now. <laughs> well, you know, you're already talking about things that you, you and your cousins are already doing something so positive that just by talking to each other and not being estranged from each other, not letting that pattern, you know, cascade down the generations to you all. 
And no matter what you're doing, whether it's getting a ramp or figuring out how to help or, you know, these stubborn people that you are collaborating and doing something different in your generation. And that really matters. And you might not notice or take, you might take it for granted, Gabby, but I think it's important to notice and appreciate that. Yeah, I, I feel for her even from far away. And, and this practice was nice to send her some love and kindness, even sitting here <laughs> with you guys. Good. Very helpful. Good. Thank you. And sitting in, in the forest behind you, that must help too. <laughs> yeah. I'm due for a camping trip. I can't wait. <laughs> I'm due for a camping trip. <laughs> Good. Thank you. So she. Hi. Um, sorry, my camera has been off. Um, um, this is not really a question, but just kind of going back to the idea of impermanence and what was brought up earlier about just seeing photos of ourselves. Um, and sometimes impermanence can be such a shock, you know? Um, and I think that's kind of what I'm trying to sit with right now. I've had a lot of death in the last month. Um, I'm sorry. It's, you know, you grew up with a village. I grew up with a village and that village is now in their 80s and 90s. So it's kind of, it's, there's beauty in it and growing up in it. And then, you know, knowing that there comes a moment where, you know, um, but um. Um, so just like, um, even, so I don't, I don't have much, I don't have tons of words cause I'm a little overwhelmed, but, um, my cat passed away, um, oh. Thursday. Um, oh, sorry. And, and, um, that feels like the biggest shock, honestly. I mean, she was sick and, um, but was she was she? fine. Hmm? How old was she? She was 17. Um, but she, uh, she passed away in my arms on oh. Thursday and I just sat with her the whole day I was just trying to listen like what does she want and I sat with her from five in the morning um and I found her and just laid with her and tried to figure out okay what does she need what do I need um and I tried to just sit and listen and listen and breathe and um and uh it was from one moment to the next right um and I did take her to the vet in the in the evening, um, and like I I left with her and didn't come back with her, you know. And it's like this moment of having people and pe like animals that for me feel like just as important as people, right? They're in my heart. Like she she wanted to sleep in my arms every night, um, and. And just as I was, as you were talking earlier, I was walking and I thought I saw her and I burst into tears, right? And so like impermanence can be such a shock to the system. And there's something about that, that I'm, I don't know. I'm just trying to like come to terms with that or sit with that or just allow myself to be in the shock. I don't know, I don't know. I think when you're saying, I don't know, I don't know, that's the wisest response. Just letting yourself not know. You mm -hmm. know, just the way you held her and you listened and you listened and you held her and you took that time to be with her and just listen and be attuned. And can you do that for yourself now? Art. <laughs> yeah. You know, just saying, what do I need? What do I need right now? How can I hold myself in my own arms? Mm -hmm. And just ask, how is it for me? And what do I need right now? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. My heart to you. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> just for listening. Yeah. The thing about the not knowing, Sochi, is that the idea, I mean, I've watched my own mind with my own losses recently. It, it wants to know why, and it wants to know this, and it wants to know that. But the not knowing, 
the being able to rest in the mystery, that's actually what brings peace. Being able to just not know. Because this, the willingness to not know is like stepping back from trying to understand and control and the, mm -hmm. just stepping back from that and and being willing to receive, well, the mystery of life, the mystery of being, but maybe also some intuition about what you need. Maybe it's a hot bath if your hot water heater is working. <laughs> I think the not knowing is also helpful in countering that maybe I should have done this or maybe should have done that or I exactly the if onlys which are mm -hmm. part of grief yeah yeah if only my brother had not been so paranoid and had been willing to facetime or zoom or if only you know we had been able to feel that i could have seen him or if only if only if only right it's just grief mm -hmm. yeah. thank you thank you, thank you for your vulnerability and open heart thank you thank you and I think you should look in the chat because people are probably going to express sympathy for your loss. What is your cat's name? Her name was Lola. Yeah, for Lola, the loss of mm -hmm. love. Mm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sochi. Uh, Laura. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Trudy. Sochi, I'm sorry for your loss. I, I know it's, mm, we do have them. That's why I always bring up that Buddhist story. I heard the uh, seeds in the village and the loss of the baby. That's why I always say that because everyone experiences. Um, you know, I'm very fortunate. My mom is 86. Uh, I'm gonna go see her next month. She has her health. Um, we think there may be some slow cognitive decline 86 and a half You've been very lucky but i'm really aware that the time is coming and yet i know i can't process something that death has not happened so i'm just trying to spend as much quality time you know she lives in florida i live here in la um you know and i'm eight months out of a 25 25 year old marriage partnership my husband so we're doing much better um we've been really we work hard to spend every weekend one night together as a family with our 16 year old and you know try to be kind but it's challenging um you know and i think about mental health month and i'm like mental health is to me it's like the most important thing that we should all get help with unless you're not mentally ill <laughs> not saying we all are or just to know our minds better I mean, I think that's it. And you know, my husband cannot find help. So as much as he's a good guy and I wanted to be married, I I would I couldn't do that to myself anymore. Yeah. So um and there's no physical or or abuse, but just a a drawing distance, interested in different things. Um but I think like I'm here on this earth to grow and become a better person. And then I can become, you know, the better daughter, the better friend, the better mother. And I always have beginner's mind. I am always learning. I am always struggling. And yet I know that I'm, you know, a good employee and I am a good sister and I'm a, I'm a good mom. I'm good enough, you know, so I have to remember that. But, um, Lately, the racism thing, I need to take that class on Friday. I haven't been in a long time because I took an eight-week an eight course with Jocelyn and Marie uh, years ago with Inside LA. And it was after that that I learned, you know, my great-grandmother on my mother's side is, had mulatto written on her birth certificate. And my grandmother was originally listed as um, Black and then changed to white in the early 20s when they had that. Uh, but I'm a white woman and I'm privileged and I know that I, I will not know you know what it was like uh, my great-grandmother powdering her face white constantly you know um but I had this thing the other night I started bawling because my son is adopted and he's a quarter Japanese 
his birth mother's half Japanese, his, her mother full. And he tells me, I, I pass, but he, people who are Asian always say, is your son, is your husband Asian? Like what, how that family? Um, but I never think that he will have an issue in this country. And the other night I saw something and I was like, oh my God, could that, could that happen to him? You know, I just was like, ah, I'm, it's getting worse and I'm just getting, you know, anyway, I need to do some more work myself, white person to learn um, and maybe ways to contribute. So thanks for just letting me be all over the place. And thank you, Trudy. Thanks for sharing your kaleidoscopic, <laughs> the kaleidoscope of your moment with us. It's a lot, you know, and um, I was looking at what Lynn said in the chat, um, which she said, on a personal level, when I compare past to present, I have the experience of thinking it was hard then and it's hard now. And I wonder how to sit with that. Well, that's what we're doing. We're sitting with that. We're just doing it. We don't know how, we're just doing it. Um, and we're supporting each other and we're using the practice to support ourselves and each other the best we can. There was somebody else who had their hand up who took it down and maybe because of the time, we are at the end of our time. Are there gonna be breakout groups today, Caroline? Yes, there will be breakout groups probably starting around um, 1.35. Okay, good. So in that case, I want to encourage you all to uh, to go to a breakout group, to have a chance to just to hang and get to know each other a little bit. Um, the one, well, 12.35 our time, um, but maybe wherever other people are. The point is you get a five minute bio break or get a snack or whatever you need, and then the breakout groups begin. Um, so thank you for clarifying that. And uh, yeah, let's just sit together for a moment. Just allowing all the reverberations of what's been said to gently settle. And then taking a moment to share whatever has been useful or beneficial for you in this time together. To share the blessings of our practice with all beings everywhere, without exception. May all beings be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May all beings find happiness and the causes of happiness. May we stick with this practice, which addresses in a very practical ways, the causes of suffering and the causes of happiness. And may we share the moments of peace and love and joy that come our way with everyone we can.
So thank you, everybody. Thank you for your practice. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, Caroline, for moderating. And um, I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you so much. You can unmute yourself, say hi, goodbye.